Felix here and good morning to you. It is another good looking day and I want to walk you through what actually makes me bullish. Yeah, we've got all time highs on lots of stocks. It looks like, is it a bubble? But let me walk you through the data points and then you'll understand where I'm coming from with this. And that's always my goal here is to make you the best informed investor trader out there so you can make better decisions, make more money. Of course, none of the following is financial advice. Just an old investment banker and his cat. Can you see her down there? Sleeping on Winston's sofa. That's a strike and a sit-in if you ever wanted one. If you want unions, get cats. I'm also super excited because in 59 minutes, I'll be teaching a couple of hundred of you exactly how I make money which is making money from my money in three steps. Our very simple and easy rule-based trading system is what I'll teach you completely for free. All you gotta do is join me in 58 minutes now at felixfriends.org slash webinar. So grab yourself one of the last couple of seats and I'll see you over there in 58 minutes. Um, Palantir, exciting. Very exciting. We'll definitely touch up on that. I'm sure if you guys have questions, uh, pop them in the chat. I will get to them all as always. Now, let's run through a couple of big, juicy data points. Big and juicy and orange. We'll get to that one too in a moment. And here it is. GDP growth, US GDP growth is expected to be off the charts Goldman Sachs is saying it's going to be th almost 3%, like 2.8% this year. And that's quite a lot for a US economy because it's a fairly established economy. The consensus of analysts was only 1.5%. So Goldman Sachs very much leading the uh, bull charge there. And what does that mean? Well, it's good news. The economy grows. Earnings grow, profits grow. We're expecting like Q4 to be, have a 16% increase in corporate profits, which will be brilliant for stocks. Doesn't mean the Fed can't cut rates. I might do a little bit later. But we've basically priced that in too now. So what are we really worried about here? Well, there's, there's even better news. I mean, really, how stupid are people? These, the, the fat drugs, right? The LLY and NVO drugs are apparently reducing inflammation in the liver, kidneys, heart, and brain. So they're going to be able to market them, not just for diabetes and obesity, but for inflammation. Obesity causes inflammation. This is not a separate thing. The only reason it reduces inflammation is because it makes you less obese. It makes you slim, and therefore you... Are Fat cells cause inflammation. It's really not rocket science. It's baffling, really, really baffling, right? So they're doing clinical trials on this. And I mean, science is a bunch of paid for hogwash, if you ask me. Uh, so yeah, absolutely baffling. But of course, it's going to be great for stocks, particularly LLY and NVO. I own a bucket load of NVO. So I'm happy if people are stupid sometimes. Now, what am I showing you here? Well, what I'm showing you and it's a little big, isn't it? Is that money markets have so much freaking cash in them. More than $3 trillion are still sitting in money markets because interest rates are still high, if you hadn't noticed. And as they come down, what's going to happen? The money's going to flow back into stocks. We've actually seen outflows of sto from stocks from the peaks of 2022, and that will get reversed. Rates come down, the stock party goes on and on and on and on. Not just the expected stock rally, but actually the real rally goes on, much like our like count on this particular video, although it does seem to be somewhat stuck at 55, 56. I think there must be something broken there, surely. What about sentiment? Are we in some sort of crazy, exuberant, bull market, dot-com bubble type thing? Not really? We were higher in 2020 and 2021. We were higher in 2019. We were higher in 2018, 17, 16, 14, 15, 13. Almost as if this old banker can count, right? 2010 and 11. We've been higher a lot of the time. What does that mean? It means we can actually get higher. People could get more bullish. Yeah, people could literally get more excited about stocks than they are right now. Well, 
don't talk the, to the NVIDIA crowd. They are just off the chart. They're like high on crack or something. Amazon and our friends at Walmart now have... It means that they have almost a 50% market share now. So every new dollar spent in retail, 50 cents of it, half of it, now goes to uh, Amazon and Walmart, most of it to Amazon. Isn't that kind of insane? So what does that mean? When you're that big, you get bigger. It's, it's irreversible at that point. And again, that's a bullish, powerful thing for Amazon and the stock market. Amazon's a big part of that. What about rate cuts? What about those pesky rate cuts of the Fed's going, yeah, they'll be coming a little bit later. No, we won't do much. Maybe we won't do May. That's what the bond traders are saying. Well, either way, the market and the consensus and everybody is expecting around about 2.1 to 2.25% rate cuts. I think my chart's a little too big here. I have to move that over a little bit. There we go. So, you get 2% rate cuts. In theory, tech stocks should go up 20%. Maybe they've already done that. And your bigger, slower moving beasts maybe go up 10, 15% or something like that. So it's very bullish. It's very bullish for the market. It really gives us lots of reasons. And then what about NVIDIA? Is it massively overpriced? Is it the bubble of all bubbles? Well, <laughs> if you look at the next 12 months PE, so basically, if you assume what we expect 2024 profits to be like, and you think they're going to hit those expectations, they might exceed them, then are we at really, really high levels right now? Can I get a straight line? We're at about 32x. That's way lower than when we were in the 58s and the 62s which is where we were in 2021 and 2020. It's way lower than 2020. It's way lower than 2017 and 18 valuations. So actually, NVIDIA is quite cheap by historical standards. I know it seems kind of like mind-blowing and there is fire coming out of some people's ears, especially Tesla shareholders who are going, don't send all the money to NVIDIA, keep some of it in Tesla. But yeah, it's actually not that crazy. I mean, it's not cheap. I'm not saying it is, but it's also not that crazy. What else is good? Well, I don't know if this is good or bad. This obviously very, very much depends on your point of view. And I don't live in the US, nor do I tend to, nor do I vote there. Um, I pay a little bit of tax there, but that's about it. But the real clear politics poll has Trump, the orange one, leading Biden by a good 2%. And the market and Wall Street they quite like it. You know why? Because Trump is seen as the pro-business guy. He's seen as less regulation, you know, pump, baby, pump, sorry, drill, baby, drill, and lower tax and, and just being generally more business, pro-business, because he's ultimately originally a businessman and very orange. So that's kind of an interesting one. Obviously, a lot of stuff can happen and a lot of it can change. And some of you might be like, no, that poll is manipulated and, you know, whatever. But there is, this is also part of the poll. Oh, I'd share this. And who do people trust with what issue? So the climate change brigade, the, um, you know, people who don't wash their hair and that kind of thing. Are they um, kidding? Um, well, they wouldn't want to hurt the climate, so they probably don't. Um, they trust Democrats, right? The uh, Ukraine-Russia war crowd somehow trust Democrats more. The healthcare guys, the gun violence warriors, the education fans, they trust Democrats. But the people who are more concerned about inflation and the economy and crime and immigration and the Israel war, well, they trust Republicans. So the question is, which of these can these buffoons make into a bigger issue in 2024? And inflation in the economy is quite a big one. Maybe the inflation thing will go away. It's entirely possible. I think immigration and crime seems to be quite a big one from the media that I see. And I think people are starting to care a little bit less about the Ukraine-Russia thing. People are ultimately 
selfish beings and it's far away and nobody quite knows where it is and therefore nobody cares as much. So that's kind of the question, right? Can they make some of these things like abortion and gun violence and education into a big enough topic for Biden to pull through? I think that's the real question. Um, and you might also start to see why the job data is so particularly strongly manipulated, sorry, um, seasonally adjusted was the word I was looking for, um, by the corrupt, no, sorry, um, statisticians, right? That's the word. So that's something to think about. Stock market probably will like a Trump win, except for Chinese equities. They might not. Is there anything bad that we can come up with today to make ourselves feel a little bit less exuberant? Well, if you look at CTA flows, and I put these kind of charts up frequently because I think they're quite useful. They basically show you what are the algo funds, what are the dumb computers doing? Not hitting my like button, apparently. And they buy on technicals. So you get people like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley and some of the big banks estimating every week what the price points are where they're buying and selling. And they probably know they're the brokers. So if we're up... Uh, big or small, they're going to buy something like um, 150 to just under 200 billion. Now, if we go down bigly, um, that's an homage to the orange one, then they're going to sell a lot, like minus 70 billion or something like that. But nobody expects it to go down because everyone's excited. Everyone's just excited and no one thinks anything's going to go down. So it would take something unexpected, a small bank failure. We all go, yeah, Fed's got us covered. Um, what about anything else happening? Something breaking? Well, the Fed's probably got us covered. So the outlook is probably pretty good. There you have it. You've got a positive, optimistic former banker here. There are not many of us. There really aren't. So come and join me uh, as I'm in such a good mood. <laughs> in uh, literally 45 minutes, I'll teach you how we make consistent income in four hours a week uh, using just three steps. Very, very, very simple, easy trading system that I've developed, that I use and teach. And I'll teach it to you for free if you join me. It says next Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. So it should not say next, should it? It should say this Tuesday. There we go. It's a seasonally adjusted uh, manipulated a uh, sign there. Uh, let's see where your questions guide us today. And I'll also show you what's happening here pre-market. I could also make myself a little smaller if you'd like me to. Hang on. Where, where, where did we go? There we go. I'll move this way. That sound, by the way, it's a chair. If you can hear it, some people are uh, thinking it's something else. So this is pre-market, not too bad, right? Amazon down a little bit, but nothing too too major. Tesla is still on the on the slide. LLY is up because fat drugs now solve everything. Apparently, the stupid thing with that is that people, I mean, really, do people really think that these drugs make you healthier? What makes you healthier is being less obese. I mean, that's definitely clear. And if that's the only way you're going to get there, then maybe the side effects are worth it. I'm not saying that they're not. But all other benefits that flow from it are just because your body doesn't have to handle, you know, all the fat, which is a problem for it. And all the stuff you're putting in yourself, which is what's what gotten you fat. But yeah, there is another, that's another conversation, isn't it? I should do a, a Felix Fat channel, see if anybody would watch it. Um, Felix and his um, fat friends. Um, <laughs> Radio. NVIDIA is green. AVGO is green. Meta is very green. Google up, Microsoft up. So it's a good day, isn't it? It's a very good day. Let's see what your questions are. I missed Palantir, says Freemason. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Pre-market. I'll put out an, a separate video on that as well. I've, I've already re recorded it. It's coming out shortly. We're up 21% pre-market trading at $20.24. 25 cents. Uh, it's like a reverse auction here. My trade is um, rather ludicrously at $14.65. So you think we're going to make money? I think we're going to make money. <laughs> we can literally, we can literally um, drop now... 25 percentage points, and we're still good. So I think we'll be just fine. Um, 
Yep. Very good earnings. Honestly, there wasn't there wasn't really a fly in the ointment in that one. And normally there, there is usually something in there. Okay, government spending could be higher. Growth was only 11%, but margins are better. The the profits are real. It's not just no longer just interest income. Margins have improved. 35% more clients, 20% more revenue. The pipeline is the biggest it's ever been. The guy sounds super excited. Carp was on the call. Like it really was just glorious, right? Absolutely glorious. S&P inclusion coming up. And yeah, so what, what can I say? Good numbers. Very good numbers. Obviously, the market likes it. I think you might see a little bit of a sell-off. I think 21% up. I, 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 I would not be surprised if we hold that for a day or two and then see a little bit of a slip and slide, which is what we usually do on earnings. You see the last gap here up, up, that was also pretty significant. And then, so don't be surprised by that. Don't be surprised by that. And if you, if you're into making money, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking profits. This is not a religious cult, right? At least not as I'm aware of. Is it a religious cult? Let me know. Um, Uh, Justin wants to learn more about value in companies. Interesting. Anybody else interested in that? I was thinking of maybe making a, a sort of educational series for a couple of days. If you're interested in something like that, let me know. Uh, Justin, I appreciate the comments. Um, CSL, you got into a fender bender. Oh, no, sorry to hear that. But I, you posted a very nice comment yesterday or the day before, which I appreciate. And I'm glad you're doing really well. It's fantastic. Uh, okay, let's let me scroll up a little bit here and see what I missed. Bob burned a calorie. That means he smashed the like button. Good man, Bob. Uh, thank you for that. Um, tech security companies are slashing jobs with incredible rate. Everybody's slashing jobs. And, and that's also one of the things that's going to make companies more, more profitable this year, right? Cut jobs. Um, I think it's... Who just put it out there? It was a Bloomberg headline just that I saw or somebody's... I want to say DoorDash or one of those guys sacking 7% off of work workforce. Anybody, everybody's doing it. Um, Pierre says S&P is at an all-time high. So why is Trump more popular? I know, because nobody spent more money than Biden. Well, Trump tried. So I think Trump is perceived, perceived as the from a market point of view, unlimited handouts and tax cuts and less regulation. So it's kind of like the uh, holy trinity of giving money away. So the market quite likes that, at least in the short term. Rural Britannia, hello, Felix. Uh, hello to you. Giacomo, what about Venezuela bonds? Are you serious? Are you serious? Step away from that ledge very, very slowly uh, and don't ever look back. Uh, so, no. Uh, my belly a little bigger because of beer, says Danzo. Oh, dear. Uh, Palantir to the moon, say a few of you. Anyone shorting regional banks, says Edwin. You are basically shorting the Fed if you do that. You do realize that, right? The Fed has explicitly said over the weekend, well, Papa Powell said that they are managing the situation around regional banks. Uh, actively, and that means bailouts are ready. And there will be another bailout come before 11th of March. Mark my words. Uh, Johan said, Palantir turned the corner, they're actually making money. Yeah. So out of the 93 million, about 50 million of that is actually real operating profit. Uh, and the rest is from, from interest payments, which is which is fine. Uh, so you can't really criticize them for, for any aspect, I, I would say, of that set of earnings data. So yeah, very good stuff. Um, uh, Amouash, you want to open a yin long? It's just very volatile. That's all I'd say to that. I mean, it's who's got a crystal ball? I, I, I certainly don't. Uh, do I do that kind of trade? Personally, no. I like to make my money in the most boring fashion possible. That's basically what I'm here for. Is, is the, the more boring, the better. And, and that's why, there we go. That's how we, how we do it. So if you want to learn how we do that, come and join me um, today. Yeah, today in 40 minutes, I'll be live. I'll teach you the whole process, the whole strategy that we have, how we make money. 
out of really, really boring things. Um, because I sleep better when I trade boring things. I don't really want to trade anything exciting here. Um, Renaissance man, which regionals are most at risk? Guys, the, they're going to bail out the regional banks. The Fed is going to bail out the regional banks. So why would you short them? And do you think if you go through and say he's got the worst balance sheet, you think you're the first one to look that no one's looked before? Have you seen how much they're down by since the 1st of January this year? I, I, I just say don't FOMO invest in regional banks or short. Go and buy yourself some decent companies or, or learn an actual rules-based system where you can make money out of doing the same thing again and again and again. Uh, this kind of hunting is very, very risky. I, I definitely wouldn't do it. Um, Howard is saying, how often are options exercised rather than expire worthless? 7% of the time, Howard. So 93% of the time, they, are, they expire worthless. Very, very few people want to exercise an option. It seems like an odd thing to do, if you ask me. Um, you are selling Palantir April spreads and getting back in later. How would you plan it? But that's what I've done. So I've sold April spreads for the S&P inclusion. Now, we'll see how much they're up by today. Uh, after when the volatility dies down a little bit, maybe by tomorrow. Maybe we just take profits on that and think of a new trade. But, you know, we'll see. Um, Keela is saying, what trading simulator do you recommend for learning options trading? Well, there's a great live trading training happening in 38 minutes, in case you didn't realize. <laughs> Felix Friends and Oxlash Webinar. So join me over there if you want to learn some more. Um, and um, if you have access to Think or Swim, that's the easiest one to use. Think or Swim, that's what I use. Um, Slater says, pay, we will paper trading. Yeah, any paper trading platform will do. The simpler, the better, obviously. Uh, Greg says, PayPal, please. And PayPal is, is reporting today. So we are obviously interested in that. I, I don't think it'll be... It is today, isn't it? Or is it tomorrow? Oh, it's tomorrow. So it's tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to get... I have a PayPal trade on. I need to get out of today. It's nice that it's up 1.3%. That'll make me a little bit of money. Um, I don't expect fireworks. I think they're just going to lay out their cost-saving program, how much that's going to improve margins by, how much it's going to cost to sack all these people, because initially it costs money and then it becomes a, a, a positive over the following quarters. I think it's a little bit more about that, the strategic thing. Hopefully, they'll give us some guidance on what ad revenue they expect. Have they got any big companies yet? You know, they say we've got 20 S&P 500 companies who are going to appetize with us or something like that, or a certain uptake in merchants who are going to appetize. Like, that's the kind of stuff that we want to hear about, which is sort of future pipeline and cost cutting. I think that's really where it's going to be. I don't think the actual numbers are going to be tremendous because you can only do so much in a quarter as a, as a brand new CEO. I mean, you've got to fire everybody first and then everything else. So... Gabby is asking, what's a calendar spread? <laughs> Play around with it in paper trading. It's a little bit of a complicated one. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't start that as a beginner. Um, Yaza says, PayPal earnings is today after the bell. Is it? Okay, let me have a look. I thought it was tomorrow. Let's have a look. Either way, I'm getting out of my trade. Uh, ba, 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 PayPal. Mine says Wednesday, Wednesday evening. I, I, my list could be wrong, but they're usually quite accurate. So today is uh, Eli Lilly and, and, and Fat Friends have reported. Very, very rich and um, fruity earnings. KKR, the um, greatest cockroach. I think that sounds for cockroach and, 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 and rascals. Uh, one of those private equity houses. And um, who else have we got so far? Ford later, Fortnight later, Fortinet later. That, I'm interested in that one. I think that should be good. And then tomorrow we've got um, Walt Disney, who now identifies as a monkey. Uh, Uber, CVS and PayPal. So they're all quite big. Hilton, interesting. And on Thursday, you know, Philip Morris, Hershey, Hershey and, and LLY, they have conventions together. And then Friday, Pepsi, they provide the liquid. 
And next week, we go into a few more big ones like Airbnb. That's going to matter. Deer & Co., I'm certainly interested. Walmart has kind of been an interesting one in terms of an, an overstock in terms of consumer health. So there's still some big, big stuff coming up here. But for today, so far, we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. Amazon, Apple down a little bit. Tesla down a bit, 1.5%. But Microsoft, Google, Meta, NVIDIA, AVGO, LLY are uh, holding up the party. Danza says, Disney identifies as Netflix stole my lunch. I think that's true. I actually think that Disney is going to improve as a stock because it's hard to screw this up more. And uh, uh, Bob the Great is actually a pretty good manager, whatever you think of politics and all that kind of madness. We need to get into that. Um, JPI says, exercise and diet cure most problems. It's very true. I've been pretty good so far this year. I must say, I think I've probably skipped two or three days in terms of exercise. That was one of my big things for this year. Exercise every single freaking day, except when I don't want to. Uh, but no, like sort of six out of seven days kind of thing. Um, didn't you say SOFA went down because Reno Bank's difficulty, so it shouldn't go up with good news. FX bailouts, Freemason. Yeah, yeah, it should. It should. SOFA just sort of gets caught up in the maelstrom of, 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 of all bad news for no particular reason. I quite like it stays low for longer. <laughs> you know, there's nothing really wrong with that. But yeah, we've got this slip and slide going on here. Volume coming down. So I think we're nearing the end of the sell-off. There is fairly good support here around 750 typically. So I think might be worth looking at a, a, a more bullish trade on that. Do we have one open? Yeah, we do actually. Oh no, we have a bearish trade open on SoFi, which we're going to take profits on today. Um, and that is just because I'm agnostic when it comes to stocks. I make money. I don't care whether I like the company or loathe the company. If I can make money in the week where it's going down, I'll take the money. Are you going to close your Palantir spread, says Heather? It depends a little bit on how much it goes up by. So at the moment, when something moves as rapidly as this, what happens is that huge move at the moment we're trading up here that orange line it means that your volatility is really high the sort of you know how much is moving up and down by so give it another day and it might come down and that might be the time to to take some profits please and um yeah so there we are markets opening in two minutes i'll be live in 32 minutes not here but on our live trading training come and join me felix Schwenzer.org slash webinar i'll teach you exactly how we make money you want to see how much money we made so far our returns interested anybody want to see it there we go i'll show you whether you're interested or not <laughs> that's the glorious thing about this isn't it uh, i i talk i talk at you uh, which works quite well for me let me make this a little bit bigger so this is a small portfolio I run for the community, intentionally small because I want people to be responsible. We did 126% return on capital employed in 2022, 105 last year. This year so far, we made 11% in January and February's just started, which is why the 0% in, in February cancels out the, the, the January as an average. But yes, yeah, so we're up 11% in Jan. So, you know, we're doing quite nicely. If you want to know exactly how we do that, then there is only one thing for it. And that is to join me Life in 31 minutes at felixrenzer.org slash webinar. We'll have great fun and we'll do some live trading together. You can ask me all the difficult questions. Watch me squirm and walk you through and literally give you our system because I want you to walk away with, with some real insight there. Minister says, why is it so easy making a trade, but for me, so hard to take profits? Seriously, if that's your problem and that's the problem for 99% of people, come and join me. I'll solve that problem for you. Seriously. Give me an hour at the webinar in 30 minutes and I'll, I'll solve that problem for you once and for all. Felix should open a fund, says Ken. You know what? I've, I've thought about it. I've looked into it. The challenge is, is very much scale, right? Because if you want to provide a fund, you want to do it, or I would want to do it at very, very low fees because I hate fees. And therefore, to cover the regulatory and legal costs, which are significant, you know, you need to bring in a fair amount of change. A uh, $100 million fund probably doesn't make any money. 
right? Which is why they close again. So it's kind of like the hurdle to get into it is, is, is relatively high. I'd love to do it. Maybe we'll figure out a way to do it somewhere down the road. I, you know, you can sort of white label ETFs, which is what certain people have done. We don't need to name, uh, you know, what I'm talking about. And uh, that doesn't, I don't know if that's really the right way to go about it. I, I don't really feel that's like my cup of tea. Um, I'd like to actually then pick the stocks to make sure that we give value. But yeah, maybe there's something we do down the road. Uh, ding, 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 markets open. Don't be greedy. Only when you drink beer. <laughs> Call it the Winston Fund. Absolutely. It'll do tremendously well, won't it? Put a golden retriever on it. Um, how's the Meet Kevin ETF doing? Well, I think it's probably doing quite well. The timing was quite good, right? That's also that's a, that's an important thing to do from a marketing point of view. You want to set up your fund when everybody hates all of your stocks, and then you'll inevitably rise up. Whereas if you do it at the top of the market, then you're going to have a miserable, miserable first 12 months, and then you're probably going to close. Uh, so there we are. Shares in Felix Co., something like that. Maybe we'll figure out something down the road. Uh, so far, we're looking pretty good. Let me have a look at Palantir. Let me share my screen screen with you. Where is it? There it is. It's up 19.8 percentage points, which is pretty good from where I'm sitting. And our Palantir trade, let me show you, is up 88% of its max profit. So the, the logical thing to do is to therefore hit the close button and, and, and close that out, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, because why, why wouldn't you, right? Well, if we can get out at like we pay two or three cents for it, then we're definitely going to do that. Let me see if anything else is flying to the moon. No, it's just Palantir this morning. But yeah, it looks good. Market's green, market's juicy, market's bouncy. Uh, we were up very nicely, which is exactly what we want to see. So brilliant. Love that. I hope you'll join me in half an hour live where I will teach you. Very simple. Three steps, how to make money. That's basically it. That's the promise. <laughs> so join me, Phoenix Friends and Rockstar's webinar. By the way, this is simple. This is easy. This is for beginners. I assume zero knowledge. So come and join me over there, Phoenix Friends and Rockstar's webinar. And I wish you a glorious Tuesday. Take care.